Hello. Oh, yeah, you can hear me. Um, I'm very pleased to be here. Marco Torpenen is my name. Uh, first time in Tartu, um, but I live not far away, so in Helsinki. But I do represent a European Institute. So EIT stands for European Institute of Innovation and Technology. And we want to help startups, but also researchers who might have a you know, really good business idea to grow and, uh, and do it in a very pan-European way, in a network way. Also, uh, I recently learned that the University of Tartu, for example, is already participating in EIT, but they're not yet participating in EIT Digital because there are several parts of EIT. There is EIT Health and EIT Manufacturing and EIT Urban Mobility, where, for example, the University of Tartu is already in. So I'm glad that uh, this connection already exists and we want to make it stronger. We want Estonian partners uh, in many ways uh, also become more closer to what we do in EIT Digital. So this map shows a little bit where we have our main focus, so where the CDs are, where EIT Digital is operating. And, uh, and although this map does not include you know, a point, for example, in Tartu, uh, we are open for business for the entire EU20. As I said earlier, we want Estonian companies, Baltic states, uh, really to, uh, to, to, to be part of what we are doing. But the local office, the nearest office that we have is, is, is in Helsinki, and, uh, and for example, the team that's, that's connecting mostly now to the Estonian community and Estonian startups is actually based in Helsinki. Another big asset that we have as EIT is that we have a lot of corporate partners, so large partners from all around Europe. Um, you can see some of them on this slide, but if you're a startup, if you're interested in connecting with these large organizations, so that's one of the things that we as a European ecosystem can do. So we can open doors, we can help you as a startup or a researcher who wants to get your business idea known or, or, or turn it into some, something commercializable and you think, for example, that you would like to talk with, let's say, Philips in, 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 in the Netherlands. So that's an asset that we have. So we can make these connections. We also have an office in Silicon Valley. I know that fairly well because I was starting that myself. Uh, in 2015 16, so we have uh, a base also in San Francisco. So, one of the things that we do as EIT Digital is that we are very strong on the education side. So, we call this our entrepreneurial education program, and there are students that go through our master school program, our doctoral school program, and graduate as EIT Digital students from our partner universities. So we have a network of universities that work together and we train them in, in sort of in their technical topics but also definitely in kind of the mindset of business creation of starting new companies. If you're an existing startup, so this is a pool for talent for you. So uh, we have people graduating from our programs like you can see on this slide every year and, uh, and they are looking for interesting places to go to. And uh, well, if you are from Estonia or somewhere nearby here, so why not uh, making your, yourself available for interesting people to join your company? Another thing that's already going on in Estonia is that Tallinn University of Technology is one of our uh, university partners already. And then last year we organized a summer school in uh, urban mobility. We will do it again this summer. So it's a way to uh, very specifically have students focusing on something which is relevant business-wise and, and come up with new ideas around challenges that the companies are providing. And for urban mobility or the, the smart mobility summer school, we most likely will be again sourcing for challenges, sourcing for ideas from Estonia because the school will be organized in Tallinn. The other side, which is what I more wanted to talk to you about, is, is our program um, on innovation and, and growth. So, uh, so there, is, there is something that we call EIT Accelerate, and I will go a little bit deeper into EIT Accelerate later, 
But the bigger picture is that we are a network of partners, and these partners together come what we, under what we call innovation activities. So, so it's not a research program. So these are not research projects. If you are from a university, EIT is not really that interesting from research-wise. The, the key thing that what we can do is that if you have something you would like to commercialize so you can join our innovation activities, you need to find partners in the rest of the network and come together and propose them to us and, and we help you to get going with the startup, create a new startup. So that's one thing, that's, that's what we call innovation activities. And then there is the other thing which is the support for scalers. So we have a specific program that helps existing companies who are already out there on the market, helping them to grow, helping them to find financing, helping them to find market opportunities, especially elsewhere, outside their home base uh, in, in Europe. We work across five areas, they are mentioned here, I won't go into details, but for example the smart mobility thing that I just mentioned, so it's under the digital cities part of our program. So we have finance cities, infrastructure, industry, and, and, and well-being. So here are some of the numbers. Uh, we have worked already with quite a few companies, uh, and uh, most, well, clearly, uh, more than 90% of the companies that we work have worked with are still in operation, so I think that's, that's a good number. Um, some of the numbers of how much these companies have raised capital and how much our team has helped them to raise that capital. So, so we, are, we are actively involved. 17 uh, countries so far, uh, companies from 17 countries have participated. We have a very strong team, uh, about 30 experienced people all across Europe ready to help your company. If you are a scale-up, you have aspirations to grow your company to, uh, to grow. It's a program where we have access to market component, access to finance component, and then what we call access to ecosystem component, which is all of them have this purpose of growth, but a little bit from different points of view. Is it you want to go to the, you know, let's say, Spanish market, we help to connect with the Spanish business developer and the local, let's say, right kinds of partners for you. If it's access to finance, it's the, the, of course it's sort of networking with the venture capitalists and, uh, and, and other types of investors who might be interested in your company. We are mainly looking at companies who are already in the stage of Series A or even B. So we are not looking at very early stage seed funding, but a little bit further on. So let's say five plus million rounds, so that's what we, uh, we do. It's not uh, a free service, so if you're a company, so we help the companies, but the companies also uh, uh, give a feedback to, uh, to EIT Digital. Here are some uh, companies who have already been in the program. Digiflag is actually an Estonian company, uh, but uh, Metron is, is from France, uh, and, and, and APRE, uh, and, and to me, this is just one sample of the kinds of things that we can do. Um, here is another one which our team is working on currently. Again, an Estonian company called Rebel Rome. And, uh, and again, helping Rebel Rome to find the right kinds of market opportunities, you know, partnering opportunities, especially now on the access to market side outside Estonia. So that's, that's what we are doing there. Then the final thing that I wanted to mention is that we also run a yearly competition that we call EIT Digital Challenge. It's part of the Accelerator program. Here are some of the numbers of the last five years of how we've done this already several iterations. But this is again open for all companies who are in the growth stage all across Europe uh, to participate in these uh, categories. And uh, uh, I think I'm running a little bit out of time but you, know, you can look at what the criteria are to participate and what the prizes are to participate if you actually win and, uh, and, and you know, join the accelerator, join the uh, challenge. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks Marco. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. I, I love you know, uh, this feeling of being a moderator and also I'm like, representing time. You know, when I show up, you feel already like, okay, my time is up. <laughs> so yes, your time is up, but thank you once again. Thank you. Okay, we are having
having now the next speaker on the stage and he, you know, you should listen to him <laughs> in this sense that, you know, Dylan knows really his stuff about how to attract venture capitalists' attention on your projects. He knows, you know, the latest trends uh, also in global sphere. So Dylan Vickers from Pitchbook, please come on stage and share your knowledge with people here in Spotlight. Woo! Hey guys, thank you so much for having me. My name is Dylan Vickers, I'm with Pitchbook Data. Um, really just to give you some context on what Pitchbook is, is we're a premier provider for private market intelligence. And I think at the end of the day what that really means is we're tracking the ecosystem of not only investors, of funds, of actual investments in private companies, we're also tracking information on round-by-round -round information. So looking at valuations, we're looking at pre- and post-money valuation, and I think the applicability here for science is how do you commercialize this? How do you identify the appropriate investors? How do you identify the appropriate vehicle to capture this capital? Just to give you some context on what PitchBook tracks, this is our global scope of coverage. So we're looking in North America around 5,000 deals. Typically, this is really the basis between 2000 and today. Um, this is the entire life cycle of what we've been tracking. So a lot of transactions here in the EMEA. Now, the rest of the world, um, a little bit less robust in this transaction set. We're also tracking the investors and the funds that are making these investments. And my purpose here today is really to identify ways to track this capital and show you global capital trends in terms of venture capital investment. Now I will say personally, this is my first time in Tartu, so thank you very much for having me. It took me about 24 hours to get here, and I've been here for about 36 hours. Um, so really appreciate you all making it worthwhile for me. It's a beautiful place, although a little bit cold. Now, let's go ahead and jump into some of the things that I'll touch on today. We're a little bit short on time here. Some of the key themes, We've noticed uh, total venture capital transactions. So the actual deals themselves have decreased since the year 2014. So deals in terms of seed and A, they're actually at their low for the last five years, making it more difficult to access this capital, more competitive for very early stage companies. Companies are bootstrapping for longer before receiving their first financing rounds. But the overall capital continues to increase in this space. As the asset class becomes more viable for institutional investors, we're seeing further allocations and commitments from large institutions, universities, endowments, etc. We're putting capital into the venture capital space they weren't previously. Now, what we're going to see also is there are higher valuations, not only in subsequent later rounds, but also in seed, A, angel rounds, are coming in at their highest levels in history. The time between rounds is also decreasing. So between first financing and second financing, we're seeing a very truncated timetable, uh, meaning that the acceleration of this financing um, has really picked up in the last five to seven years. And lastly, the quality and the competition in these early stage companies is incredibly robust. There's a finite amount of venture capital, there's a finite amount of deals that take place every year, and if people are allocating larger sums to a smaller amount of companies, there's obviously some pretty robust competition. I think that's probably pretty evident. Um, anyone here in the audience, by a show of hands, has tried to raise capital for their business in the past 12 months? Anyone? Okay, that's a pretty good start. Anyone succeeded in raising capital in the past 12 months to this point? Congratulations, excellent. Let's go ahead and dive into some of the details on the global venture capital landscape and how that's affecting startups, and how that's affecting future rounds for you. So we've got here really identifying um, the VC investments by series. Now I've got here C through Series E. I've omitted Angel, it's a little bit opaque. Um, but this is the global capital breakdown in terms of the deal count. As we can see, we peaked in 2015. And actually running through 2018, we're at our lowest deal total over the past five years. Now interestingly enough, you can see here that anything Series B, C, and later, they're still seeing about the same amount of deals as opposed to where between 2015, the peak in this timetable, and 2018, we went from just over 7,500 transactions for C and A to below 5,500 transactions. So that's a decrease in deals of 30%, which leads to the question, is it more difficult today to capture capital for a business? That's really what we want to focus on. How are people commercializing ideas in the early stages? I think the answer to this, there's, there's really no 
easy answer to is it more difficult to capture capital today? I think it still pertains to really what you're looking at as far as your technology and who you're targeting as investors. But what I will say is there are a couple of options in terms of grants, uh, bootstrapping, that have prolonged the period prior to initial financing. That's really led to the decrease in both seed and A. Now, additionally, there is uh, an issue of capital overhang. There's a significant amount of capital from institutional investors uh, that have been put in place as the asset class becomes more viable. So with this additional capital, if I've got a $50 million fund, I can do 20 deals, no problem. If I have a $500 million fund, it's more difficult to efficiently allocate hundreds of deals, driving the actual initial price up higher um, in an attempt to mitigate risk. On the complete inverse of that, so we see the trajectory of the deal count decreasing, we see the total capital invested in venture from seed all the way through series E increasing more than double over the past five years. So in 2014, we're looking at around $70 billion. Sorry, something in euros. I apologize, I speak in dollars. Um, $70 billion in 2014, and last year, a banner year for venture capital investment across the board, all the way up to over $170 billion. Now, what we can see here is it's really across every single series the overall capital invested has increased. So moving from less than a million dollars for an initial seed round to over a million dollars for an initial seed round, is really indicative of higher valuations at the earliest portion of this investment cycle. Now those metrics in terms of total capital invested, total deal count, I think they are helpful, I think they are interesting, but there are some other ways we can look at this, look at the velocity, uh, we can look at the actual multiples, we can look at the escalation of what people are doing round by round, and I think that's really interesting. So right here we're looking at what we consider a step up, Valuation. So this is really the multiple between round one, round two, or round three, round four. So what we're identifying is what's the multiple relative to your previous round? Now our analysis team, at Pitchbook we've got about 400 researchers and about 30 people on the analysis team, and they've really deduced that this multiple is going to continue to increase. So anticipation of additional rounds at higher valuations I think is pretty imminent here. Right now in 2018, Again, we didn't track December for this data set. Um, we're looking at a 1.9 times multiple. Identifying if you raise $5 million, there's a fair participation, it'll be close to $10 million for that next round. We've got the calculation there as well. So that's really just the valuation of current round divided by the valuation of their previous round. Another interesting metric that I think is, is very helpful to see, this is what we call the velocity of value creation. And this is kind of an interesting metric here. So this is actually removing um, some of the bias of later series, of early series, et cetera. We're focusing on the velocity of that. And really the velocity is calculated here, showing you the change in valuation. So if I move from $5 million to $15 million in 365 days, how much value am I creating every day? This actually negates any sort of irregularities in terms of deal sizes, things of that nature. And in 2018, we saw a significant uptick and that's in millions, so that's $30,000, indicative that in the year 2018, we're seeing companies that are venture capital backed, escalating value at a median rate of $30,000 a day. That's pretty impressive, and certainly a high watermark. Again, there's just so much capital to deploy in the space, it's continuously deployed, so much capital that it really, I think, creates a bit of a barrier to entry for companies looking for very small amounts to really push people into angel investing, high net worth investors, family offices, grants, equity for service. So this is something we've seen, especially converting kind of these scientific discoveries, uh, lab discoveries in terms of the actual technology, science, into viable commercial uh, applications. Now, just for a quick focus on the European market instead, one of the other reasons that I believe it's really more effective to identify what's happening in these various industries. So it's obviously less labor intensive for me to run a software company than it would be, or you know, capital intensive for a software company than it would be for something in 3D printing, something in um, advanced uh, diagnostics, something that's going to be very hardware intensive, very capital intensive, very labor intensive. So we've seen a significant uptrend in European software over the past 10 years in this data set. Again, some of the areas are being crunched, but some of them are also looking fairly, fairly substantial. 
but we're seeing this nearly 50% of all companies receiving VC investment, that's any series, angel through, it's really focused on software. So that's where we're seeing a lot of this, and I think that that's where we're driving some of these companies that can go longer and longer without taking in any institutional capital whatsoever. Now, there's a stable level of deal value, um, you know, lower down here. And I just want to take away a couple of things from that previous slide. So the competitive landscape in the early stage universe, obviously driving fewer deals. So it, your recommendation there, continue to build your business as much as possible before taking on those rounds. Once you receive a round, the important thing there is you're on the radar and the next valuation round is statistically going to be higher than it was two, three, even four years ago. Number two. Funding, as well as the time between funding, is accelerating as well. So the time period between financing round A, financing round B, financing round C, is tightened up significantly, which really <laughs> lets you to leverage the capital you get, build out your teams quickly, rapid growth is expected, and also we're seeing these venture capital firms apply capital to add on rounds more substantially. Uh, there's certainly an appetite for A, B, and C, more so than the earlier stages, C and prior. With the avail amount of available capital, all-time highs, there are still deals to be had. There are still deals to be had. So my recommendation is always ask for more money. That's a good way to start. You have to be innovative. Obviously, driving something that can be commercialized will be helpful as well. Identifying similar companies and their valuations and being able to pitch this to those that have available capital is essential to growing the business. Now, I did mention earlier there are growing alternatives to traditional venture capital as that dries up a little bit on the earliest side, on angel seed, et cetera, we do see more angel-specific investors. We see more high net worth investors getting into this asset class that's at an all-time high. Individuals looking to navigate and circumvent fees from going directly to venture capital funds are looking to find businesses like yours, ideas like yours, to escalate and directly access this venture market. People want to get into private companies. It's become a very viable asset class over the past 10 to 15 years. Prior to that, it was viewed as it's kind of a risky component of this. Now, I really think that in terms of the overall kind of run through, um, that's what I wanted to touch on. But there are a couple of other things we can look at here. Uh, we have a couple predictions in terms of what we're looking at for 2019. And we are obviously going to see the largest number of venture capital backed exits in terms of dollars, euros, in 2019, escalating from 2018, uh, largest number since 2012. We've got 10 companies preparing for IPO, very top heavy, that are over $10 billion in current private market value. Uh, our analyst team, myself included, certainly see an increased escalation in exits via IPO, large M&A, as well as buyouts from the private equity community. For me, I believe that that's going to cover it, uh, but I appreciate the time very much. Hopefully you guys got a good sense of the early stage to late stage commercialization of business, and I really appreciate everyone having me out to talk to. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Oh, all right. Thanks, Dylan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so tell me, you know, first some question. Have you raised money yourself? No, I have not. Ah. Uh, ah. So, um, how do you know so much about that? Well, it, you know, my day-to-day -day role is actually primarily working with venture capital firms, private equity firms. They're looking to find ways to allocate, and I assist them in identifying ways to find companies, find early stage ideas, commercialize those ideas. So I'm more of an intermediary. I think I'm more of an advisor in this capacity, um, and that's really kind of where I come in. Oh, that's that's cool. I think that you uh, we need these kind of like how, how did you say intermediaries? Yes, yes, uh, the, These absolutely. people as well. You, you know, need to be a conduit to connect these. Mm -hmm. It's obviously difficult to be aware of every single company in the entire universe. Obviously, these companies that are coming out of labs or spinning out of universities, um, they've got some very valuable technology, and their access to investors is sometimes difficult. There's a bit of a wall there, especially without a network built in for that. Um, so we assist in identifying both the companies as well as the investors. Awesome. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Here you go. Thanks, guys. Woo!